Good morning. How are we this morning? Can everybody hear me all right? It's, it's coming through the speaker. Lovely. Excellent. It's good to be with you this morning. Did you all survive the cold yesterday? Yes, it, it, it was very, very cold. I, I put a post on Facebook saying, I know I'm Canadian, but man, it's cold today. Uh, I, w I was so cold yesterday. I just felt like I never quite warmed up. Uh, but in the, if, if we thought we had it bad, Elsie's just sent me a video. She's walking down to the chapel at the University for Church. She sent me a video of all the snow everywhere where she is. So she's just up in the Midlands, not that far away. And uh, she's had a load of snow. So, uh, but we're in the Advent season, aren't we? We're in that time, that special time, as we prepare ourselves for the coming of the King. Amen? Amen. We've got a little video that's going to just help bring us into this time of worship. Just allow us just to reflect a little bit before we uh, come into worship. Sorry, we have a new man on the computer today, so... Another Advent begins. Here we are again. The candle lit. The endless lists. The stresses and the strains. In all that lies before us. For all that is in store. Stop now and take a breath. Take comfort in the storm. Go gentle through this Advent time. Don't be led astray. Take this God rest, this ancient truth. Be born in us today. Advent is a time of reflection. Christmas has become a time of excess and parties and everything else, but Advent is actually a time of reflection. It's a time of withdrawing. It's not the time of, of overeating and uh, excess that it's become today. And so as we come to church, that's what we seek, don't we? We seek those moments to reflect and uh, this year, our, our theme is going to be comfort and joy. And um, we have a Bible reading to, uh, to start us off. And um, from Isaiah 40, um, reading verses, well, until the verses stop there, because I've not gotten it written down, because Rebecca gave it me the Bible verse late. One to five, there we go. So in Isaiah chapter 40, verses one to five, it says, Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she's received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling, in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up. Every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level. The ridged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed. And all the people will see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. That's a wonderful last line, isn't it? And the glory of the Lord will be revealed. That's what happened when Jesus was born. His glory was revealed in a small infant come to save the world. We're going to uh, 
<coughs> excuse me, sing together, number 49 in the, in the red books, if you're following there, or the words will come up, joy to the world. Let's stand and sing. <coughs> sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. He rules the world with truth and grace, and makes the nations prove the soul. of his love, wonders of his love, the wonders, wonders of his love. Let's just say a prayer. Father God, we come before you and as we, we worship you, as we enter this time of Advent, we look forward to seeing the wonders of your love, the glories of that come when you lavish your love and grace and mercy on your people. And uh, as we come into this Christmas time, we pray that we will be ever mindful of uh, what it is all about and who it is all about. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite Tim and uh, him and Peggy are going to come and they're going to light our Advent candle for us this morning. So Tim reads, then you light, then he prays. Yeah, yeah. This one? The top one. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. This reading is from Isaiah chapter 64, verses 1 to 4, and verse 8. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood, and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you. Who works for those who wait for him? O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Over to you, Peggy. God of justice and peace. From the heavens, you rain down mercy and kindness that all on earth may stand in awe and wonder before your marvel deeds. Raise our heads in expectation that we may yearn from the, for the coming day of the Lord and stand without blame before your son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. 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 So, thank you, Tim. So, um, 
I'm going to give you some pre-warning. Later on, I'm going to invite people to share some scripture that's been encouraging to them. So start thinking now. It's, It's not for a little while, but start thinking now if there's a Bible verse that has been brought you comfort or brought you joy at perhaps a, a particularly difficult time. So uh, we're, we're going to do that a little bit later in the service. But now, we've been learning sign language, haven't we, over the last little while? Rebecca's been done the, the Lord's Prayer. Can you remind us Lord's Prayer? No, just the first, just the Lord's Prayer. The, the Lord's Prayer. There we go. The Lord's Prayer. Excellent. So we're going to learn a couple new signs today, and that's going to help us with our next song, okay? Because our theme this this Christmas is comfort and joy. So we're going to learn the signs for comfort and joy, okay? They're very, very simple, okay? So comfort, comfort, like you're, like you're saying, saying to somebody, there, there, okay? Comfort. So you always use your dominant hand, okay, to do the sign, comfort, okay? And joy, you take your non-dominant hand and you take your other hand and you go like that, like you're beating a drum, okay? So comfort and joy, excellent. So that's going to help us because our next song is God Rest You Merry Gentlemen and the chorus says tidings of comfort and joy. So as we sing, when we get to those bits, try and put the sign in, okay? So it's number 33 in the books, if you're following in the books, or the words will come up on the screen and we're going to sing together, God rest ye merry gentlemen. I think, I know we've already stood, but I think we should stand again, okay? We'll pretend, we'll pretend we're, we're in proper church, where you stand at every song, okay? So let's stand and sing. God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. For Jesus Christ our Savior was born upon this day to save us from the Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. From God our Heavenly Father a blessed angel came, and unto certain shepherds brought tidings of the same. In Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Now, I think just to be fair, this next verse, we should have no accompaniment so that the piano can do the signing and David can join in with the signing. Okay, so we're going to sing it a cappella so that in the chorus you can do comfort and joy. Okay, are we ready? We'll sing the third verse unaccompanied. The shepherds at those tidings rejoiced much in mind and left their flocks a feeding in tempest, storm, and wind and went to Bethlehem straightway this blessed babe to find. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Excellent. We got, we got to work on our timing because it speeds up there, doesn't it? Then it slows down again. But we'll, we'll get it right. We wouldn't be any good on the, on the television, would we? Do, do you remember that story about that person who, who found themselves doing the translation in sign language and they didn't know it and they just were making it up and it was a complete, gi- <laughs> it was complete gibberish. <laughs> but, uh, but we'll have the piano again. We'll, we'll let your fingers go to something more productive, uh, Pam and David. Thank you. 
And when they came to Bethlehem, they were reflimpant lay. They found him in a manger where oxen fed on hay. His mother Mary kneeling unto the Lord did pray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Excellent, we got the timing right there. Just in time for the last verse. Now to the Lord sing praises, all you within this place. And with true love and brotherhood, each other now in praise. This holy tide of Christmas, all others does efface. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Excellent. You're all wonderful. You're all amazing. We're going to have our uh, next Bible reading, and the next Bible reading comes from Luke, and it's Luke chapter 2. Uh, can you tell me the verses, love? Because, again, I don't have them written down. Luke chapter 2. <laughs> Rebecca doesn't have them written down either. Yes. So you can get up at verse 8. Okay. Luke chapter 2. Verse 8. Is it through until they actually see the baby? Uh, no. no? Okay. We don't want them seeing the baby yet. It's not Christmas. 8 to 14. Thank you very much, Shirai. Thank you very much. Okay. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 14. It's on page 1027 in the Core Bible, if you're following. And there were shepherds living in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Find my place again. There we go. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Rebecca's going to bring us some insight into that, but we're going to sing again. It's that time. We sing a lot, don't we? It's caroling time. It's to get the good news out there that Jesus Christ is born. Number 34. Good Christian men rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Give ye heed to what we say. News, news. Jesus Christ is born today. Let's sing together. The piano is going to help us. Good Christian men rejoice with heart and soul and voice. say news news jesus christ is born today ox and as before him bow and he is in the manger now christ is born today christ is born today now i forgot to say we're going to take the offering up while we're singing this And 
and yes, it's going wonderfully. And then after, after we're finished is when we're going to share our verses of Bible verses of comfort. Okay, so be ready. We're making two offerings today, offering of some of our money and an offering of God's word to each other. So uh, we'll sing verses two and three, and as we do, we'll bring our offerings and then we'll share our Bible verses. Good Christian man, we was born for this, Christ was born for this. Good Christian man, rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now ye need not fear the grave. Peace, peace, Jesus Christ was born to save. Calls you one and calls you all to gain his everlasting all. Christ was born to save. the Bible verse, a Bible verse to share this morning, to bring us comfort and joy. Anybody, you're all looking away from me, not wanting to catch my eye, just in case I... Thank you, Pam. I can always count on you. Amen. 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 Somebody else. In a world full of trials, trouble, and tribulation, I get comfort in Joshua 1 verse 9, where it says, Do not be discouraged, do not be dismayed. I have your news. Do not be afraid. I will be with you wherever you go. Mm. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We've got others. You got to wait in the queue, Rebecca. Rebecca, I think there's a long enough pause for you to have yours. She was depressed and then she met me. <laughs> That's when she became absolutely suicidal. <laughs> no, 
I'm joking. Go on. It says, For all the firstborn are mine. When I struck down all the firstborn in Egypt, I set apart for myself every firstborn in Israel, whether human or animal. They are to be mine. I am the Lord. Psalm. Amen. Yeah. Some verses which I've found comfort in many times, uh, and in fact, they they were the verses we had at our wedding. Um, are found in Romans, and they say to the, us this. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, angel nor demon, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither heights nor depths, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite Rebecca to come, and she's going to open Scripture up to us, and I'm sure bring us some comfort and hopefully some joy. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. It's lovely to hear verses that other people have found a blessing for them, isn't it? It illuminates our experience. Let's just close our eyes at the moment, and then we're going to, going to delve into God's Word together today. Lord, I thank you that you are with us wherever we go, that you share in our troubles, that you are God with us, that there is no problem that is too big for you. And I pray that as we enter this time of, of thinking about you, of pondering what it all means, that your Holy Spirit will just bring to life the Bible once again to us so that on the days when it is difficult, we will find great joy because the Lord's presence is with us through his word and through his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now we like, um, am I on? Yeah. Yep. We like films in our house and um, I want to talk about the film Back to the Future. Who's seen Back to the Future? It's got a really cool car in it and the wings go up like that, the DeLorean. Okay, have you seen, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. If you don't, just smile. Okay, yeah. just smile at me. Okay, so there's a teenager called Marty McFly and it's set in the 1980s. He go, decides he's going to go back in time 30 years so that he can fix what's wrong with his family. Because his family in the 1980s is hopeless. So he wants to change it. 
So he goes back in time. But what he discovers is, in going back in time into the past, that he's actually erasing the future. And he carries in his pocket a picture of his family. And as the events in the film go on, the children in the family start to fade out of existence. And that's the problem with time travel. One of the problems with time travel, apart from the fact that it doesn't exist, but one of the problems with time travel is that if we change the past, we might not have a future. Now, God has a different solution for dealing with the things that we regret that have happened in the past. God has a different plan, doesn't he? And it begins when Jesus comes. But today, I want you to humor me, okay? I want to, you, to encourage you in your mind to engage in a bit of time travel, to pretend, if you like. I want to encourage you to go back to the story of Jesus' birth. Not to change it, but just to be part of the story. Wouldn't you have loved to have been there and seen it? Now, last week, Michael got us to play a game called Where's Jesus, didn't he? Do you remember that? And we looked at various images to discover where Jesus was. We had to look for him in our modern times. And it's so important when we think of Emmanuel, God with us, that we see Jesus in the supermarket, that we see Jesus on the street, that we see Jesus waiting for a bus or at the office party. But there is another important part of Emmanuel, God with us, and that is that we see ourselves as part of his story. Sometimes we sing the carols and the words are so old-fashioned or we read the accounts in the Bible, and it's so peculiar. It's set in a faraway land a long time ago in a world we don't understand. These people, they don't look like us. They don't dress like us. They don't speak the same language. And it can be easy for us to think, oh, that story was just for people in the past. But God's big story of redemption is for us today. Not only do we say, where is Jesus in my world? But we say, where am I as part of his story? Am I part of his story? You can answer. Yes, I'm part of the story. Maybe you understand what it's like to long for a child for years, to be aging, and no baby comes. Maybe you understand that. Maybe you understand what it's like to be a penniless worker doing a job that no one else wants to do, out in the cold, in all weathers, at night, doing a dirty job nobody wants to do. Maybe you understand that. Maybe you understand what it's like to be a harassed parent on a long journey, trying, just trying to be a good mum or a good dad and not having the resources that you need every day. You know, it's not just that there's no room at the inn. There's no room on the bus, is there? Or maybe you know what it feels like to be a stranger in a strange land, going to the people in authority and not getting the right answers, not getting the right response. 
Maybe you understand that. So we're going to look at the story again. We're going to look harder. We're going to look closer. Because we, too, are part of the story. We're part of the story of God with us. So we're going to go back in time. We're going to go way, way back. We're going to go long, long way back before what happens in Bethlehem. We're going to go back to Jerusalem in Isaiah's day. Imagine you've got into the DeLorean. It's gone 88 miles an hour. The clock tower has struck. And now we're back in Jerusalem with Isaiah. Because things were really bad. In fact, things in Jerusalem were hopeless because it looks as if God has left. It looks as if he is no longer with them because the Babylonians had invaded. They had broken down the city walls and they had destroyed the temple. They had carried off all the items used in worship that God's people used. Okay, they'd carried away and they'd carried away most of the people into captivity. And what they had left behind in Jerusalem was the poorest of the poor living in a wasteland. So imagine some of those cities we see today that have been bombed out and you just see destruction. People without hope. And yet, in the middle of this, God's voice is heard. And this is what he says. He says, comfort. Comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to the city and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received double from the Lord's hand for all her sins. God wants broken people to know that there is still hope, that this isn't the end of the story. He is going to do something new right in the middle of all this devastation, all this grief. God wants them to know that every valley will be raised up and every mountain will be made low and the crooked places will be made straight and the rough places will be made smooth. God is still with us even when the worst has happened. Can I have an alleluia? Alleluia. And this theme of comfort is repeated throughout Scripture. God, Jesus, promises us the gift of the Holy Spirit, whom he calls another comforter. Now, the role of the comforter, the sign was there, there. The role of the comforter is to help us in our pain and to bring healing to our wounds, to hold our hand and be with us during the suffering. But the word comfort means with strength. Okay? God's comfort is more than just, there, there. It's more than saying, never mind. God's Holy Spirit gives strength to broken people because God does not intend for us to remain permanently in a state of weakness and poverty. The comfort of Isaiah's words to Jerusalem where the things were about to change. Tell Jerusalem that her hard service has been completed. God gives his people strength to endure terrible things 
but he wants people to know that the terrible things will end, that they will not last forever. We are not called just to put up with it. We need to know that. Now, years and years ago, my mother, she had the privilege of going to China because despite China being a communist country, they allowed the Salvation Army to go in and build wells in areas where there was not always access to clean running water. And they called them the Wells of Salvation. <laughs> Doesn't that make you laugh? The Wells of Salvation. And one of the women she met was an elderly grandmother who told her that there was a Chinese saying, saying that in seven generations, things will get better. But the grandmother said to my mum, this is what we say in China, but why do we have to wait seven generations? Why can't it change now? God comforts his people and brings them hope. And hope changes things because it changes people. It helps them to believe that something different is possible. Something better is possible. Part of God's comfort is to give strength to the weak so that they can challenge the oppression that they are living under. And that means that God's comfort is sometimes a little bit uncomfortable. Uncomfortable comfort. But there is something else for us that God has today. There's something else that God's presence brings. We sang it earlier. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Back in Jerusalem, God gave his people words of comfort. But there was more. On a cold hillside near Bethlehem, God's angels proclaim a message of joy. And both messages, if you read them again, are not just for a few people in Jerusalem or in Bethlehem. Both times the message is for all the people. You can look it up. God's comfort is available to all the people. Now, when you are going through tough times and you're experiencing grief and loss and devastation, it's one thing to expect a message of comfort. It's entirely different to expect a message of joy. Part of my job, the privilege of being a Salvation Army officer, is to be with people. To be with people sometimes at their worst moments. I've sat with people when the doctors have told them they've only got weeks. And they've received that news. The medical professionals say, there's nothing much more that we can do for you, but we will make you comfortable. So comfort is the best that they can expect. And when you're in pain, comfort is welcome. It's important. But God is saying, there is more. At our worst times, nobody expects joy. Comfort is the best that we can hope for. Nobody expects joy. Back in Jerusalem, they'd lost everything. The city was in ruins. The wild animals roamed there. It was gone. There was nothing left of the life that they used to know. There was nothing left to come back to. And yet God promises not only comfort, but joy in Jerusalem. When you lose someone, when you're going through it, you will think, I will never smile again. 
I will never laugh again. There's nothing left of my life as I used to know it. But God promises us more than comfort. He promises us joy. Even in the worst of times, even with the worst of news, the angels say to the shepherds, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. All the people. And the truth is that our God is full of surprises. He has more in store for us than we could ever expect. And it says in Psalm 30, weeping may last for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So Zechariah and Elizabeth, who are waiting and waiting and waiting for the baby that never comes, receive a child in their old age because God is a God of surprises. And Magi from faraway lands who don't really know the Bible enter the presence of the Messiah because God is a God of surprises. And penniless shepherds who weren't welcome in the, in the temple because they were dirty kneel at the manger and look into the face of Jesus. Because God is a God of surprises. And God with us means that far, far more is possible than we can even imagine or hope for. So the carol, God rest ye merry gentlemen, was written in the 16th century. And it sounds like it was written in the 16th century, doesn't it? when we sing it but the message of the carol is people today remember that Jesus was born remember that God is with us the carol takes the listeners back to the story of his birth and invites them to be part of the story so that they will live differently now the last verse talks about loving our brothers doesn't it loving our neighbors God is with us so that we can live differently now so we're all part of the story I don't know which one you relate to best. We all get to come and stand with them because God is with us. And we also need a message of comfort. We also need a message of joy. Some people in the city are literally living in the ruins of what their life used to be. They need to hear that God is with them, that there is comfort and joy, even if the ruins are of their own making. People need to hear it. We need to hear it. So let's let the story change us change us now let's hear the message of comfort and joy and then live it out and see what God has in store for us what surprises are on the way what's going to happen we don't know but God is with us Thank you, Rebecca. And of course, that becomes a reality when we allow Jesus' room in our lives, a place in our hearts. And uh, we're just going to have some moments 
to reflect and we're going to listen to a song which is called Make Room. And as we do, feel free to respond as you feel the Lord uh, telling you to, if that's to come and, and pray here or if it's to pray in your seat or to come and ask somebody to pray with you, just respond as, as um, God leads you. to tell his story through our lives that we will make room which allows him to change us to transform us so that we are people that our lives tell the story of his love his grace and his transformation to all of those who see us and meet us that they too will come to know God's love and glory and transformation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite Shirai. He's going to come and just make a few announcements for us. Good morning to you all. Um, a special welcome to visitors joining us this morning in the call. Just a few announcements and a few reminders. Um, so we'll be having our carol singing at Cutford Precinct uh, next Saturday from 10 to 11. Uh, just a reminder for those who've signed up, and, but we welcome more volunteers. Thank you. And that Sunday, um, the 10th, we'll be having our toy service. They need to be brand new and unwrapped, please. So we'll be having our toy service. Um, and then the, on the Monday the 12th, um, well, Tuesday the 12th rather, um, at Lewisham Call, we're also looking for volunteers to help wrap those gifts and parcels up and the toys. And that will be from 12 till 3 p.m. Um, the Christmas collecting happened yesterday. I heard you froze, but, <laughs> but you thought. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I like it. Um, and then just a reminder, our carol singing um, for the over 60s and friends, please sign up at Green Hill Home Care Home uh, will be on the 14th of December. Um, another shout out for the Christmas ball, um, £10 a ticket. Please get your ticket as soon as possible and look forward to many of you joining us for that. Um, we still have some snowflakes, only one pound, so please if, do grab one and it's only one pound while stocks last. Um, <laughs> they are last. They are last. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, we've had two birthdays this week. Yes. Uh, you're going to have to play for yourself, fam. And also Douglas Gardner. Um, it's Douglas Gardner's birthday as well. Um, so, shall we say? Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Pam and Douglas, happy birthday to you, hip hip, Hooray. hip hip, Hooray. and may the Lord continue to bless you and keep you. Um, flower list, don't forget the flower list, any amount, please see Hydrant. That's all the announcements, and do join us for tea and coffee after the meeting. You can't sign up, though, because the flower list isn't at the back. I don't know if we're renewing it or not. But uh, Now, Pam, you won't know this because you're not on the core chat, but all these, many of these people wished you a happy birthday the other day. There were, there were many, many messages wishing you a happy birthday on, on your birthday and videos and things like that. So, yes. But uh, we, we hope wherever you were, whatever you were doing, you were having a good time. Lovely. We're going to sing again to, to uh, bring our time of worship to an end. It's number 57. Um, long time ago in Bethlehem, so the Holy Bible say Mary's boy child, Jesus Christ, was born on Christmas Day. Let's stand and sing together. <laughs> Time ago in 
Bethlehem, so the Holy Bible says. Mary's boy child, Jesus Christ, was born on Christmas Day. to Bethlehem that night and find no place to bear she child not a single room was inside hark now hear the angels sing a new king born today and man shall live forevermore because of In a sable wall for Lord, and in a manger cold and dark, Mary's little boy child was born. Hark now, hear the angels sing, a new king born today, and man shall live forevermore, because of People of God, we wait with hope. We wait with courage. We wait with joy unspeakable, full of glory. We wait with the assurance that the liberator will come in power, in justice, and in peace. Go now, trusting and believing that this is so. In the name of Jesus, the Christ. Amen. <whistles>